Holiday Tree Genetics is going to be our uh, first actual uh, lab that we're going to do for the Punnett Squares and Genetics. Uh, and because it's the first one, we're going to do it together, a uh, whole class. And instead of using a coin uh, to flip, we're just going to use an app called Just Flipped Coin or something like that. Um, so that we can focus on how to do it, not necessarily the playing around of flipping the coin. So it says you're going to flip a coin to determine the tree's genotype, which we said that's the actual genes. And they're represented by capital letters and lowercase letters. Capital represents a dominant, and lowercase represents recessive. You're also going to use the phenotype key meaning what does it look like? Phenotype is what does it actually look like? Genotype is what are the actual letters of the genes? So when we flip heads, we're going to put a capital letter. That's going to be dominant. If we flip tails, we're going to put a lowercase letter. That's going to be recessive. So looking at the phenotype key, we see that they have random ways of selecting these letters, and it doesn't always make sense uh, to us. So the characteristic is height, OK? So they could have used a capital H for dominant and a little h for recessive. Or they can sometimes use the dominant trait. So height for the tree is very tall if it's the dominant trait. So they use a capital V for very. Now, the recessive trait is short. And so it should be a lowercase letter, and it is. It's a lowercase v. Notice it's not a lowercase s, because you never have two different um, letters. You, have, you can have a capital of one letter and a, cap a lowercase of that same letter, but you're not going to have a capital V and a little s. Okay, so make, you're going to make sure if they give you the genotype letters, you use their letters. Dominant being a capital, recessive being a lower case. So we're going to start out with the characteristic of height, and we're going to record what we flip first. So I'm going to use this uh, to flip my coin. And so I'm going to record tails as my first flip. Now, since I got tails on my first flip for height, I'm going to look at height. And here it says recessive is a little v. And so for my genotype, I'm going to put a little v because I flipped tails. Now I'm going to flip again my second flip. And I got heads. So I'm going to write heads as my second flip. And that means it's the dominant trait, meaning I'm going to write a capital letter. And for very tall, capital letter V is the dominant trait. So I'm going to put a V. Now, most of the time, you're going to see the capital written first. I'm just doing it this way so that everything that's in the first column is from the first flip, and everything that's in the second column is for the second flip. Now, the phenotype is what does it actually look like, all right? When we look at the tree and it has a genotype of dominant V for very tall and a recessive trait for short, the dominant trait is going to win out and the actual tree is going to appear physically very tall. Okay, so that's the phenotype. What does it look like? Body shape. We're going to flip the coin and we got tails. We're going to flip the coin again and we got tails again. So when I look at my dominant for body shape is a capital F for full or fat. And my recessive trait is a little f for thin. So I got tails. That means that's a recessive, so lowercase. And this is also recessive, so that's lowercase. So when I actually look at the tree, if I only have the recessive traits for a thin tree, and there are no dominants in 
the genotype, then it's going to appear as the recessive trait. So I'm going to have a thin tree. Needle length, I'm going to flip the coin and I get tails. Needle length, I flip the coin and I get tails again. So I have two recessive traits. I've got to go over here to find capital L would be dominant for long needles. Little l is recessive for short needles. So I have a recessive trait and a recessive trait. And that means that my needle length is going to be short needles. Color of tree, I get tails and tails. So I have two recessive traits, so the little g, little g, and that means that my tree is going to be a blue color, like a blue spruce. Now, when we did the uh, pasta genetics, we had like a yellow shell and a blue shell from dad, right? And we said that you had a uh, one out of two chance of getting the blue shell and a one out of two chance of getting the yellow shell. So that was 50% of the time you would get blue and 50% of the time you would get um, the yellow. And that's why a lot of genetics uh, simulations use heads and tails because it's also 50%. 50% of the time you're going to get heads, 50% of the time you're going to get tails. You're always going to get one or the other, right? Just like you were going to get one of the shells. You were going to get blue or you were going to get yellow. So that's why they use heads and tails. It's also a 50% probability. The topper on the tree, we're going to flip and it's going to be tails. We'll flip again. It's going to be heads. Okay, so when we look at topper, they could have used a T for topper, but they didn't. They used S for star. Capital S for star, little s for no star. So I have a little s and a capital S, but because this is a dominant trait, I'm going to have a star on the tree. So we're going to flip for the lights. We've got tails which is recessive, and tails, which is also recessive. So when we look at the light color, capital C would have been, if we had color lights, that's dominant, but recessive was a little c, and that means we have white light. So if I have two little c's, tails is little, tails is little, then that means my tree is going to have what color lights? It's going to have white lights. Now, the rest of these, I'm just going to do the flip. You're going to do the genotype and the phenotype. So, for trunk size, we get heads and tails. For having a tree skirt or not, heads and tails. For round ornaments or square ornaments, heads, heads. Six candy canes or ten, heads. I'm sorry, yeah, or ten. Tails. Garland type, heads. Now, Without even flipping the second time, garland type, popcorn is dominant, cranberry is recessive. If I know I have one dominant, could I also figure out my phenotype? If I have a dominant for popcorn, I'm going to have popcorn. But we'll go ahead and do the flip. Tails. Under the tree, presents or, tr or train? Heads and heads. Now, you say, well, why do we do the second one if it really doesn't matter? It does matter when these trees reproduce and have offspring. 
Okay, so then it makes a difference. So I'm going to let you fill those in. I'm going to pause for a minute so you can do that. Oop, wrong thing. Okay, so I want to make sure you filled them in. And there's our answers. We're going to go ahead on to the back. And we're going to use this tree that we have uh, created. And you're going to draw that tree using these phenotype descriptions. The other part is the Punnett square. So it says, if your tree marries someone with a genotype of RR for ornament type, what percentage of the offspring would have the same phenotype as your tree? Okay, so we have to go back to our table, find ornaments. We had a heads, heads, so that was capital R, capital R. For our tree, we had capital R, capital R, and our tree's phenotype was round. So we're going to use that information to fill in this Punnett square. So we're going to put our tree at the top. And then we're going to put the one that it marries on the side. Okay, remember it really doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to take this trait and come down that column. This trait, we're going to come down that column. And then we're going to take this dominant trait and go across and this recessive and go across. Now, the question asks about the phenotype. So we have to actually figure out what would this two dominant traits for round ornaments look like? Well, they would have round ornaments. And this one with one dominant and one recessive would also have round ornaments. This would have round ornaments and this would have round ornaments. It says, what percentage of the offspring would have the same phenotype as your tree? Well, my phenotype is round. So that's one, two, three, four out of four, which is 100%. A lot of people mistakenly go, oh, but there's only two out of four that have the same genetics as you have or genotype. But that's not what it asked for. It asked for phenotype. The next one says, if your tree marries someone with a genotype of capital C, little c for light color, what percentage of the offspring will have very colored lights? I don't know why they put varied, but colored lights. So our tree is little c, little c. It is a white light tree. So here is our little c, little c. And then we're going to put the capital C, little c. And so when we bring these down, we got little c, little c, little c, little c, because we have all recessive traits. This dominant trait is going to be across. This recessive trait is going to go across. So now we're looking for phenotypes. If it has one dominant trait for colored lights, it will have colored lights. If it has two dominant traits for colored lights, it will have colored lights. But if it doesn't have any dominant traits, it will have white lights, just like we did. And this is called heterozygous, one of each, right? Um, it says, what percentage will have colored lights? Well, we have one, two out of four, one, two, three, four total, and that's 50%. The next one's a little more tricky. It says, if your tree marries another tree that is homozygous recessive. Homo means same, so we write the word same above it. Recessive means little letter. If it was homozygous recessive for color, so we're going to go back to color, and that was green and blue, right? So homozygous means same, recessive means little letter. So we've got the little letter G. So if it was little G, little G, and then it married our tree, so we got to look for our genetics on our tree for color, we were also little G, little G. And so we have little G, little G, little G, little G, 
and we just got a lot of little G's. Okay, so that's down.